Hello guys, today I want to make a video around a tweet that I retweeted about Laravel collections and how to make some piece of code shorter and how to even test it. So this is the tweet by Austin Cameron, which transformed this sentence, this for each loop, for each if and else, into one method of collect. It's not one method, actually, it's a chain of methods, but it's a one-liner. And my retweet got really popular with 130 likes and a lot of things that were commented and I want to dig a bit deeper and debug it. So first, what was the original value of the filters? What does that all mean? And how these features in collections make it shorter? What is flatten? What is filter? How does it work? Let's take a look at the code. So this is the code that I've recreated in home controller and I tried to guess what were the initial values and this is what I came up with. So basically, for each of the filters, first we're checking if it's array or not, which means it could be an array or it could be a value, string or true false. Then, if it is an array, then for each of the options, if it's not false, then we increase the count, which means that it's true or false. Then, if it's not the array, then if it's not false, then we count that as true. So, this is true, this is true, this is true, but this is false. And then there's the second way for now commented out. And let's first see what is the value of these parameters. And in home blade, I just show the count. So the result of that is count four, which means six elements. This is filtered out and this one is filtered out. All of the others become true, which means four enabled or activated filters. So that's the initial set of data and that's how it should work. Now let's try to shorten it with collections and let's see what each of those methods actually do. First, let's just blindly uncomment it and launch and see if it gets the same result. Refresh, count four. So the result is the same. And how does that happen? Let's dump to the screen the temporary variables. So collect filters will be variable number one. So dump collect filters, then dump collect filters flatten. And what is flatten? I will tell in a minute. And then dump collect filters flatten filter. And the count, we know the value, it is four. So what are the values of collect, flatten, and filter? We refresh and this is the result. The result is collection of items like this. So all collect does is transforming the array into Laravel collection, which means that we can use collection methods on that, nothing more than that. Then the second flatten transforms that collection by removing the second level arrays. So see some filter true here, some filter false, and flatten just returns true and false for those elements of the collection. Everything else stays the same, but just those two are flattened into the same array. If we take a look at the official documentation of Flatten, here's the example. It transforms the multidimensional collection into single dimension. Like in this case, we have value of Taylor and then the value of array of PHP JavaScript. It removes the keys of name and languages and returns Taylor, PHP and JavaScript as one array or one collection. And this is exactly what we need in this case. So we need to know whether it's true inside of the array or not inside of the array or false. We don't care about these in this case, about the keys. So we just flatten the value to get this collection, this array. And then the filter, if we dump the filter, this is the result. So method filter on a collection filters out everything that is false. So this is removed and this is removed. The keys of the collection stay the same, but we don't care that much about the keys in this case, because we just care about the count of these elements, which actually returns four in the end. If we take a look at the official documentation of filter, it actually in most cases expects the callback function. So filter of what? That callback function should return true or false, so Boolean values. And based on that values, collection will be filtered. So those elements that don't support this condition will be filtered out. But then if we read further, if no callback is supplied, all entries of the collection that are equivalent to false will be removed. And keep in mind equivalent to false, so C, what values would be removed? Null, false, empty string, zero, or empty array. Basically having no value. And again, this is exactly what we need here. We need to filter out false. So this is how it works. 
Now, a more global question and a more practical one. If you work with a project and you feel that this can be refactored into something shorter, but you are not sure how and where to start from and is it even possible, how to deal with that situation and how to have the courage to refactor because quite often we're afraid to refactor. As the saying goes, don't touch what's already working or don't fix what is not broken. And for that, I would advocate the approach with automated tests. So we can move that hole for each into its own method somewhere. And that somewhere, for example, could be a service class. Service class basically is any PHP class that provides you a service. So for example, you go to the restaurant, you order something and you get the service. So restaurant provides you a service. Similar here, you just create any PHP class in app services folder, for example, you call it filter service and you put in all the methods that are related to filters. And in this case, for example, count enabled filters method. It's kind of like a black box. So you provide the filters array and it returns you the count int. And I've just copied and pasted that for each and for now commented out the collection way. And then we can write automated test. In this case, it's a unit test. The difference between unit and feature tests and all the other like behavior and other kinds of tests is mainly unit tests test the internal part, some kind of code unit of the application. In this case, this is exactly true because we're testing the service black box. So we're not calling any API. We're not calling any visual URL or endpoint. It's just the internal test. That's why it's unit test and not a feature. And this is how it looks like. So the file is in test unit filters test. And to write automated tests, you need to come up with various scenarios. And this is the whole point. So the question is how to make sure that this works in all possible cases. To answer that, we need to write out all the possible cases. And I tried to do that. And for example, what if the filters are empty? And to calculate that, I just call the service method and then all the other scenarios. So three scenarios with no arrays, with no enabled filters, with all enabled filters. So true, and then the expected result is one, and then some enabled filters. So two out of three, and the result should be two. Then we get into more complicated scenarios with arrays. But this is the case where everything is false, so the count should be zero. Then the test is called all enabled filters, so all true. The expected result is two, and then some enabled filter arrays. And then three tests with mixed parameters, both variables and arrays. And again, covering what if everything is false, what if everything is true, and what if sum is true. And if I launch PHP Artisan test now, the result is this nine passed test. And as a proof that it all works and all catches errors, for example, I change that to two and it should catch an error that three matches expected two. So this is how you would test that your refactored code is actually working. And then the final step, if you're sure that your for each method is actually working, then in the service, you replace return count with return the collection methods like this, and then you rerun the tests, PHP artisan test, and all tests are still green, which means your new code returns the correct result. And then you can remove, totally remove this one, and then your service method becomes one liner. Let's relaunch the tests again. It all still works. So in this video, I wanted to show the example of refactoring two collections, both explaining those collection methods a bit and showing the approach with automated unit tests to make sure that your refactored code still works. And actually fun fact, while writing those tests, you may find out that your original code doesn't work in all the scenarios. So that would be fun as well. What do you think about that whole thing? What do you think about collection methods, about the approach with automated testing? Shoot in the comments below. And if you want more tips about collections, some of those tips are in my repository of Laravel tips. On GitHub, I have more than 200 random tips about Laravel, and some of them are about collections, so you may check them out as well. The link to the repository will be in the description below. And see you guys in other videos.